I just realized that I have the same haircut as George and the same glasses as you, Luke. <laughs> perfect. It's the oh my perfect. goodness! Miss, you're you're a jabo. You, you, yeah, yeah. you should you should you should join us. Uh, yeah, it's a perfect, perfect mix of you two. <laughs> okay, welcome to episode twenty-two. I'm Luke, and I am George. And today we are joined by legendary artist and all-round creative, a lot of money. This feels like one of our most inspiring episodes to date. We get an insight into a lot of money's journey into and through the space. We take a dive into the NFT art scene and get some great advice for both upcoming and established artists looking to tokenize their art. At the end, we read out some amazing farmer gerbil entries and announce the next non-fun gerbil. And we also have a special drop happening. So it's an action-packed episode today. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Non-Fun Gerbils podcast, the show about digitally scarce gerbils, non-fungible assets, and the growing decentralized economy. <laughs> A lot of money. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. You are a well-known name in the space. You are a, uh, an artist, an animator, a builder, I suppose a, a 3D architect, and a, a comedian and a political narrator, maybe? I don't know. Many, many things. Yeah, I do, I do lots of things, but sometimes I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I don't even realize I'm doing them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, all the, the the political side i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> well it's it's fantastic to have you on um maybe you could tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you came to the space oh uh i started as an illustrator when i was 20 years old i was uh, drawing cartoons for uh, associ various uh, associations and i i always uh, i have always been working um in uh, art, in visual art. I, uh, later I've made uh, motion videos, um, video video editing and uh, motion design. I started by drawing and little by little I came to uh, audio and visuals. And then in, uh, in 2017, someone um, asked me if I wanted to do a job who is go was gonna be paid uh, in Bitcoin. And uh, I did not really know at the time uh, what was Bitcoin. Uh, I, I knew you could buy drugs on the inter internet with Bitcoin. That's all about all I, I knew about it. And uh, I started uh, looking uh, online to, to, to have a better idea if I should say yes or no to be paid in Bitcoin. And uh, I, uh, the first videos I see were uh, Antonopoulos videos. And... Uh, it was uh, to, to me. It was very, very exciting because it was uh, very close to what I politically think. Uh, it, it was a solution to a lot of problems, and it was it was amazing. So I say yes for the job. The job never uh, never happened. That's the plot twist. But I, <laughs> I stayed in a, I stayed in a, in Bitcoin since. So it was the the, the best job I never had. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's a great place to um, to stumble upon as your starting block um, and Antonopoulos videos. And I'm sure that's where many, yeah. many people have, have started. So how did the transition come from, from discovering Bitcoin into becoming an NFT artist? Oh, it all started on, um, on Twitter. I had some kind, some kind of a health issue, and I, I stopped working uh, in, at my act, at my actual job for a long time. And I had time to spend on crypto Twitter, and I started um, designing uh, headers for uh, for Twitter pages. And people were asking me for uh, for headers that I, I was designing uh, piece by piece with IDs I was grabbing everywhere on their Twitter pages. And that's how it all started with um, one day John McAfee asked me to make his banner. And uh, and from there it, it grew. Uh, I had more and more popularity, more and more uh, commission coming. And, uh, and then I met uh, Sparrow, uh, blackbox.art. Who uh, who told me I, I who told me about first crypto voxels, and then little by little I I came to the the NFT world uh, 
and started uh, understanding. Uh, it took me some time to understand the NFTs. Uh, it took me some time to realize that uh, all I had uh, ever done it was um, digital images. And now there was a way to sell those digital images uh, as work of art, as uh, unique pieces. And uh, once I understood this, uh, I decided to give it a try, and uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the first coming in uh, just before the big wave, uh, ju just before things get uh, uh, get crazy and uh, and the prices uh, rises. So I was lucky; it made me able to to jump in super rare to to be on many platforms. Uh, which I'm not sure I would be able to do right now because it's it's crowded. It, there's so many people and quality skilled people trying to get in that uh, that I, I, th I think I had a lot of luck to be the, to be the part of the first people getting in. Yeah, your 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 gallery in Crypto Voxels with all of the um, the Twitter banners and the John McAfee work. Yeah, George and I were exploring that over a year ago now, and that was. That was one of the amazing turning points where you realize, wow, this is. This place was a gift from uh, from Sparrow. Uh, she uh, at first she she told me that I could use it as much as long as I needed it to to expose my work, and then one day she said it, it's yours. Uh, but so I I kept it exactly like I, I did it. Uh, it was my, my first steps in, uh, in crypto voxels, so there, there's not much architecture or things like that. But uh, I can I can change it right now. It's going to be my old museum. I, I need to make a new one. <laughs> but this this one is going to stay as it is because there are, that that's my fa my, my favorite uh, NFTs of all is this parcel. You know, that's where uh, everything started, and uh, and uh, yeah, I love this place. Um, actually, it was your um gallery in crypto voxels that was the first gallery i went to actually in crypto vox and it was it was the first time i understood the power of what this virtual world had created because i was looking at your pieces previously obviously and you know on open sea and various other and, and, it, and it's so um uh it's so flat seeing nfts in that in that way and it's page after page after page and uh, actually, uh, I became far more excited about your work. Actually, visiting it in three D and seeing seeing it, uh, uh, it became so much more alive and interesting. And it, that's when I really understood the power of crypto voxels, really, and the fact that galleries uh, uh, were going to spring up all over the place because you could actually get a far deeper understanding of the works, which is really, really quite extraordinary. Yeah, you have the, the possibilities to have very large. Uh, my headers are um, were pretty small when you see them on a screen, or uh, but as soon as you can, as you see them in front of you in a wall, you can get close enough to see the details, and you can uh, you can you can be surrounded by the piece, and uh, that that's something you need a you need a pretty big gallery to do that in, in real life. And uh, you don't even have to use the VR. The, the simple fact that you can get close to to a piece and uh, focus on on what uh, you want to see is uh, is something that makes the that makes the immersion greater. I think yes, it definitely. Have you tried um, Somnium Space in VR? No, no, never. No, uh, I, I had a I, I just had a, a VR headset a, a few weeks ago. I had an old one that uh, that used to that uh, stopped working way before I I got into uh, NFTs. And uh, so I, I bought a new one. I bought a Quest just before they released the, the Quest number two, and I'm quite happy. And uh, <laughs> same, <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> and I had I had no time to to try uh, anything right now. And I'm, um, uh, I have to try Crypto Voxel in Viara. Uh, right now, I uh, I have too much work. I have lots of projects, and uh, I don't have time for this. I tried um, 3D modeling with uh, with the VR headset, and that that's something I really really want to explore because it's it's amazing, and it it makes things so much easier uh, for me than doing this on a screen. Uh, it's a uh, it's amazing. I was very inspired to try 3D modeling with um, two of the different tools that they've got on the Oculus. And I realized that I have zero 3D space art uh, ability. <laughs> you try Gravity Sketch? Yes, yes. Yes, and uh, no way. 
I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I mean, oh, I love the way it works. It feels really cool to be able to shrink and expand, you know, the little thing that you've made. But I tried to make yeah. a gerbil in it. And um, after I was inspired by watching, watching Metageist live. But uh, what's great is that uh, I have a 3D printer too. So uh, I, I, I started doing things and uh, I, started, I started printing them. And uh, it's awesome. I, uh, I, I definitely want to explore that. Uh, and I don't have any time to do this right now. <laughs> but it's, it's good. It's good to have no, to not have enough time. <laughs> That's so cool when you can make something in VR in in 3D and and then just print it and have the actual thing in it as a as a real thing. Yes, I'm sorry. I I have my my mic is falling down. I have to fix it again. And <laughs> no worries. No worries. The screw just felt on the ground, so I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I just should don't touch, not it. touch it. Touch it at all. <laughs> because if it falls, I'm gonna have to hold it. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, with, with um, Somnium Space, I certainly feel like you 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 get that feeling. But then you can also see the texture. It's like you can touch it. Yes, it's very cool. Yes, in, in crypto voxel there are some problems with the any uh, in animated images that are not looking that great. Uh, yeah, the resolution is quite low, isn't it? Yeah, yes, and uh, that that's try. I know Ben is trying to increase this, but it, with all the mobile, uh, he would have to do two two different things. You know, there there would be something like a des desktop app, or that would be the only way to have a high def on a, on animated images. So right now. So what do you make of the general art space at the moment or the NFT art space? I think it's, uh, it's I think things are getting interesting because uh, there are more and more uh, artists coming in. The structure are well in places. Uh, everything works pretty well and uh, anyone can mint and uh, very easily now uh, in a in a matter of uh, of hour, you can understand everything and uh, publish, uh, mint your first NFT and maybe sell it. So uh, things are going to change. I think there's going to be um, there are going to be different ways and different needs that are going to appear that are not there yet. That's why we see so many different things uh, in places like uh, Haribel, for example. Uh, so many new things and things we that you don't really understand where where they came from and what they are. And I think this is going to be um, in the future. Is going to there, there's going to be different markets and the, we, different tribes of artists, and you will be able to to. To, to go on a, on a on platform to look for specific art if you're more into illustration or if you're more into abstract things uh, you'll be able to 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 have a platform that, uh, that that's that's designed for this right now it's it's looking messy but it's uh, it's great because there there's more and more activities and more and more people coming in and I'm very curious to to see where this is going is is this going to be like the classic uh, art scene and uh, is it going to evolve the same way or um, or is it going to be something totally new that we don't have any idea now uh, what it, what it could be yeah that's that's definitely a vision that i share i think the uh, the, the way in which collectible art can be created in such a sort of quick format um, and you can get it onto the market and there's an audience for it um, but at the same time uh, uh, as uh, to your point, the people who put a lot of time and energy and effort into producing uh, 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 artworks will gradually sort of rise to the top. I suppose uh, there, there was a, a an app um, that's that's no longer uh, with us called Additional. Did you did you come across that? Um, where where it was a sort of um, Instagram of NFTs. So you you could take a picture and it would immediately produce an nft so it, you get the sense that that you know N nfts can become anything from a, a moment of inspiration that you happen to take yes or all the way through to you know people spending huge amounts of time and en energy and effort curating their their works and creating their their works and and we'll, we'll get everything in between and i think that plays to your point about the market stratifying into different areas yes 
It's like uh, before we we were drawing on the wall, to, on the caves on the wall, and suddenly there's paper. So uh, anyone can draw and sell his work on paper, and uh, that so everyone is trying, you know, to draw something on a piece of paper and selling it, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the paradigm is not the same as when you had to to have a have a wall and a, and a cave to. To, to, to carve something so it's 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 completely new i have no idea where where this is going and but i'm uh, i'm glad to see it unfold and to be part of it it's uh, it's very amazing yeah certainly certainly a very exciting and fast moving space um, oh yes i think um getting in and and just riding the wave of of experimentation and growth is 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 a really cool thing to do yeah those that have full careers in the art world uh, can come to this space and suddenly find they have a whole new suite of tools to put against the you know, career that they've had in the art world. And it's really interesting to watch some of the most popular artists in the space have that in their in in their in their back back history, as it were. Um, so super interesting to see that. And, I, and uh, artists as well as collectors now uh, with platform like uh, Async Art and uh, all those features of uh, programmable art gives uh, gives uh, some kind of legitimacy to people who do not understand completely the blockchain and NFTs. Now there is a reason to have a digital frame because your art is changing, your art is evolving, uh, is grabbing data on the on the internet and turning them into art and uh that that's that's to me is uh, one of the main uh, reason that would make artists uh, even artists that are already selling well and that does not need another medium to sell that it's it's quite fascinating to have a work of art that can evolve and that can be uh, that, that can evolve even uh, after you if you if you script it well so that's uh, that, that's something that, uh, in my opinion, it's it's that kind of revolution that we are we have to expect. Art is going to change uh, deeply, and, uh, and we are we're just seeing a, a glimpse of what, what it will be. I love the idea of there being a an old master kind of picture. You know that sort of old uh, sort of Caravaggio style light and. And it, it gradually changes over time, but like a really long length of time, like sort of 50 years. And then, you know, it's in a frame, but gradually like, you know, the dog walks away and suddenly there's no dog in the frame. <laughs> yes, um, there's, the, uh, there's the ability to make jokes and, thing, and things like that. Yet In, my, um, in uh, the dictatorship uh, I made on uh, I think there's uh, right now you you haven't seen uh, 10 percent of what's uh, what's possible with this piece i'm keeping a lot of things for for the future there are scripts uh, there are things that are supposed to happen at moments uh, in time and uh, and some other things i can change and uh, yeah you can you you can create uh, art that is going to be surprising for a long time yeah oh that's cool so is some of that automated that you've programmed from the start? Yes, yes, yes. The, the Async team uh, programmed um, lots of events uh, on the on the piece, and then I have uh, something like uh, 40, 40 layers I can play with. I can scale, I can change the color, I can change the opacity, and I can uh, act on the piece and tell stories. I, uh, there are some there are stories that are ready to be told and, and not I haven't begun yet. Because um, I'm also waiting for a, a tool that uh, the team is supposed to make uh, that will mean make me able to try things before uh, uploading them uh, on the on the original piece. And uh, right now I have to, uh, I have to wait for a com blockchain confirmation and things like that to adjust to the millimeter. The, the, and I have no preview of what I'm doing. So soon there's going to be a tool that uh, going to make me able to have a preview before. Uh, changing the piece and then i can have fun i mean that's what that's it's a playground it's an amazing playground that you've got there <laughs> yeah 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 and i made it so i can have fun with and uh, uh it belongs to basileus and uh, i'm glad he has it because uh, i know he's gonna have fun too when i'm going to start because <laughs> that that takes the idea that you can add value to an nft by you know, airdropping something to it or giving someone the ability to use it in a certain way, but and it takes it to the next level where you're actually changing what they own in the first place uh, over time. Then, uh, 
I can even uh, ruin it completely and make it all dark if I want. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's well, for April the 1st only. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting into Banksy territory there, aren't we? Um, <laughs> yeah. sh shredding, shredding an artwork on the wall. I, I wonder what he would make of all of this. Perhaps one day we'll find out. Yeah, I, there, there's, he has a lot of possibility to burn or to send to, to millions of people at the same time. I think he could have fun with this, yes. What what do you make of the um, the platform governance coins that are starting to pop up and and social tokens and things? Uh, right now, I make shopping with this. <laughs> when I, <laughs> <laughs> I buy things when I when I uh, logged into uh, Rarible uh, when they, I heard about the Rari to token, uh, I connected and I saw that I had uh, lots lots of them. Uh, it was the first time, I think, in human history where you had free money coming in uh, in your account like this. And uh, I heard that some people had a lot. Some someone even had half a million dollar of uh, Rari drop uh, airdrop <laughs> on his uh, on his MetaMask. So uh, I'm, I think it's a, it's a good thing um, to have a, a token and a way to uh, to govern uh, the platform. Uh, in the democratic way, uh, I'm not sure right now. It's the the main goal. the The main goal is to create lots of uh, volume and activity on a uh, on platform and to uh, to try to from what I from what I saw on a um, platform like Haribel, it was a, it was a way to to fight the sushi uh, disaster that was that were happening to them. So they they decided to create something and. Uh, it it boosted the it boosted the the, the platform a lot. Yeah, I mean, because you you use all almost all of the platforms, don't you? I mean, I th I think you've you've been on most of the curated ones. Yes, yes, I'm a, I'm a most of all, all platform. I tried I tried them all to see how the contract were were working. Uh, I really liked uh, OpenSea at first because you were able to kind of create your your contract, you know, and decide uh, decide of every everything. Uh, su su super rare is uh, is perfect for one on one pieces because uh, that that's what people are, ex are expecting there. It, uh, they're expecting something uh, quite straight ahead. There's only one p. There's only one one edition, and uh, and you'll have to you'd soon with soon with their new uh, auction system. It's going to be even more clear and uh, and simple. Uh, I, I tried a little uh, Rarible, but not much yet. I used it for uh, my uh, voxel uh, creations, uh, my vehicles and my uh, motorcycles and the cars, mostly. And I started to make uh, editions. Uh, I made two two different editions uh, that worked pretty well uh, a few weeks ago. So I think I'm going to continue. It's a, it's a good way to. To make more more light pieces, you know, because I'm uh, I'm in projects. So right now, I'm um, I just finished a project with uh, Trevor Jones on uh, ETH boy is uh, his portrait of Vitalik uh, from the Picasso painting, and uh, so so that kind of work is is taking a, a lot lots of days, lots of uh, hours, and uh, it's it's a good thing to have an an exit like Haribel to to make my little memes and my little funny things and. Uh, I, I, I used it for mostly for this. Satisfying all levels of, of complexity and, and seriousness, I suppose. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, different kinds of col collectors too. Can you talk about the um, the Trevor Jones piece or is that still, uh, still under? Oh, I can, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not sure I can talk about it. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't <laughs> talked. Uh, Trevor haven't talked about it yet. The piece is going to change with uh, different parameters that are directly connected to uh, the ETH blockchain. So there's a uh, there's Vitalik sitting on a chair, and behind Vitalik, uh, the scene is going to change and evolve, uh, depending on, on the on the price, depending on the fees. Uh, depending also on the, the the difference with the price of Bitcoin and, uh, and things like that, oh, so cool. it's gonna be a it's gonna be a piece that is supposed to look different almost every day. Oh, that's amazing! And if you if you have the key to read the piece, that are quite simple, it are color codes and uh, ups and downs and things like that. You're able 
by just looking at the piece to know what is the the the, the 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 price of ETH, uh, well, what are the, the the recommended fees and things like that. So there, there is going to be vi visually lots of information, and I, I try to make it as fun as possible and uh, enjoyable to watch. So there are extremes, like uh, ETH at at, at five thousand K dollars and ETH at ten dollars. I hope we will never see this <laughs> coming. But uh, if if it does, you 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 maybe there's going to be something to to compensate that that you will have something funny to watch on the <laughs> on, on the on the frame that day that maybe will will help you. You've created the silver lining to Eth hitting ten dollars again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That sounds amazing. So someone could use that as their dashboard. Their morning, they get up, they look at their art piece, and that that art piece then tells them what the price of ETH is, what Bitcoin's done, what the what the gas fees are. If they, you know, if they hone their eye to it. Yes, yes, that's uh, that's one of the pieces I would like to have just here, to look at it and to to to, to see where uh, Ethereum is going to today. You know, uh, it's uh, <laughs> it it we it's going to be some kind of an uh, we we are, we are planning on making animations on uh, like for for example one year of uh, Ethereum, uh, and it could be an animation on what happened and. Uh, on the Ethereum blockchain during that year, so there are lots of uh, lots of ideas in the in this one, and I I think it's it's going to be a, a good one. I I can't wait to see it running. I can't wait to to have the async team uh, making uh, making it run. Uh, now they have uh, everything is in their hand, and uh, we are we are waiting with Trevor uh, about uh, mid November for the the release of the piece. Okay, amazing. I'll, uh, I'll I'll start saving. Um, <laughs> is it is it going to be a one of one piece? This this piece. Yes, yeah. there's going to be just uh, one master. Uh, certainly, uh, also a layer that is going to be sent to someone very important to this artwork, and uh, he will have the possibility to change uh, some elements uh, as he, as he wants. But there will be only one one master. So yes. You, you, can start saving. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Trevor is, is known for uh, for having big auction. Uh, and, yes. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Well, it's certainly it's certainly really some, something to look forward to. Yeah. Yes. Looking forward to it too. Do you have a sort of relationship with your collectors? As in, do you know them well, or or is it more you sort of pass in the distance and wave wave at each other from afar? It depends on the on the feeling. There are some collectors like uh, Basileus that is uh, that I'm very close to because he we have the same kind of uh, taste in uh, in science fiction, in books and things like that. So we have a lot a lot of uh, culture culture in common, and uh, the connection was very very fast and very easy with him. Uh, it was also very fast and easy with uh, Well Shark. That is uh, someone that has a lot of humor and that uh, that is very funny to to interact with, and uh, and uh, and also the people who started uh, collecting my first people who started collecting my work like uh, Token Angels, for example, uh, pe people like that. But I'm not uh, I'm not systematically uh, getting in contact with uh, with collectors. Sometimes it happens, and, uh, and sometimes it it does not. But uh, I'm trying to say thank you in my Twitter comment and things like that, but I never reach to, to, to them directly. I guess there's a, that would be a lot of people to try and keep up with. Um, now, now with uh, yes, with uh, editions and things like that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but at first, at first, it would have been possible, yes. Yes, I saw that your your rareable fifty set latest drop has almost completely sold out now. Yes, there are something like nine left or something. Yes. I, well, I wanted to. I wanted to burn uh, to to burn uh, to, to wait till Friday to burn the remaining uh, ones, but it looks like I will not have much penises to burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking about senses of humor in common, um, I, I watched your chat with JC Bellini, and you mentioned Monty Python and John Cleese, and you have a tattoo on your arm, don't you? Uh, I've got a John Cleese here. Yes. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Fantastic. Amazing. Yes, I'm a, I'm a fan of the Monty Pythons uh, since I'm um, 11. Yes, I discovered the uh, Monty Pythons in the little cinema that was in my next where uh, I lived. And uh, my English teacher 
was in the in the cinema looking at Monty Python's, and I I, uh, I was a very bad student, and uh, he didn't really like me before that. And uh, I went back to see the Monty Python's movie. It was the meaning of life, and I went back to see the movie three times in one week, and the three time he was there too. So we, I had a, I had a kind of connection with this teacher, and, but I, I was a brat, you know. He hated me at first, <laughs> but we had some kind of Monty Python connection, and uh, after oh, that. No. Uh, I kept on uh, on watching Monty Python as mm. much as I could. I think they're geniuses of, of humor, and uh, that, I that, totally that, agree. That's the kind of thing that made me laugh uh, all my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I went on a, uh, a a binge of Monty Python YouTube videos after um, you, you triggered that with the, your chat with Josie, and uh, <laughs> and I ended up um, yeah going through all of the old Monty Python stuff, and then a load of John Cleese's latest stuff as well, and. And it, it brought about this idea that um, of, of recreating, and this is where we've we've come to um, a collaboration together. Yes, um, which we haven't announced yet. So this is this is the announcement now. Um, yes. we've uh, we've recreated one of the iconic scenes of Life of Brian. Yes, I received a, a scene with a lot of little gerbils to to animate. It was uh, it was very very fun to do, and uh, of course this uh, the, the the idea was great because it's uh, it's a Monty Python's idea at first, <laughs> and it it was perfect. It was very very fun to do, and the the voices you added on it makes it just perfect. I love it. Well, um, hopefully it's going to make people laugh. That scene in particular is one of my favorites, and it always makes me laugh. So yeah, that's the goal here. <laughs> yes. And that's a good thing. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, as important as eating a, a meal. See, a, a laugh a day is very important. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so we're going to put that on auction straight after this. So if you're in the listening party right now, then right at the end we're going to drop the link, and it's it's a one of one, our, our first solo gerbil. So yeah. Speaking of collectibles, do you collect anything yourself, Alotta? Yes, yes. I started collecting uh, as soon as I started selling because uh, then I, I discovered an artist that I had no no, no idea existed and, uh, and I wanted to, to share uh, what I was earning because uh, uh, when, when I started making NFTs, um, people started buying uh, my, my stuff and uh, it, it was a, a financial boost compared to what I what I knew before so I felt like I'd have to I had to share this and uh, I, I tried to to buy uh, everything that I would like to have in my apartment everything that that I love everything that looks great I tried to to grab it I prefer to buy uh, new artists and people who are starting and um, I must now have something like maybe 200 uh, the, the different nfts and i i keep on uh, i keep on buying each time i see something that uh, at least make me smile <laughs> oh that's wonderful i think that's definitely the way to go i think there's finding the joy in in the arts and the collectibles it is going to bring so much more than just just buying for investment's sake and yes and it's it's very addictive, you know. Once you have a collection and you look at it, you you want to have more of this kind and maybe more of this kind too. You know, you're starting to see it as a um, a part of yourself, you know, as, a, as some kind of expression of uh, who you are and what you love. And uh, that's totally addictive. Everyone, I uh, I have uh, during years, I I have tried to bring people into uh, into cryptocurrencies. Uh, sometimes without without great success but uh, each time i'm sending a piece to someone and uh, getting them into collecting uh, i see their their wallets getting bigger and bigger with more and more things uh, and, uh, that, that, that's that's very very addictive <laughs> that's like when you when you collect uh, little stickers you know for when you're a kid i think it's kind of the same the same thing you won't have them all <laughs> yes, yes, but without the mess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I uh, I always find there's a, a another crypto punk with a trait that I want. It's so cleverly put together that project because it's like oh, no, I haven't got one with a cigarette. I have to have one with a cigarette. So yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then there's just there's just always another one that that, that captures my attention. And, and there's many projects out there like that. I totally missed the cri crypto punk. I came a little too late, I think. And uh, yeah, miss, miss them. Uh, 
I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's one of those projects that we'll look back on. And even now, at a, min, a, a base price of five Ether, we'll still kick ourselves and be like, Psh, could have got a crypto con- punk for five Ether. <laughs> but <laughs> but, um, but that, that's, all, that's all good. Um, yeah, that's, that's, um, it's, a really, it's a really nice, uh, a nice way of looking at purchasing NFTs in the space with a sort of slant towards the newer because that 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 helps bring bring people down down the funnel and and every now and again I look on Twitter and there's a, you know a tweet from someone who's just had their first piece bought and there's this sort of elation that you can see that 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 that, that suddenly they've they've got an audience but not only an audience they've got patrons yes um, and it can and it can happen so quickly in the NFT world yes. um, and I, I think that's why gradually we'll get this. Uh, well, it's already moving this snowball, but I think this, it's the snowball moving. You know, is is sort of supercharged by this this speed at which you can find an audience, um, and 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 find people who like your work. Uh, it's very exciting. Yes, yes, and everything is very centralized in Twitter. That, that that's great because uh, that, that's where uh, everything is happening in uh, the cryptocurrencies. So uh, it became. Um, where everything happened in the NFT world too. And uh, everything is concentrated and uh, that's great. That's great to have concentration <laughs> for once <laughs> <laughs> and, to, and to be able to, uh, to, 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 to have uh, everyone around. And during uh, all, the, um, all the beer market, there were a lot of people that were uh, on Twitter, but the, did not really know what they were doing there because there there were no there were no charting to do everything was falling down and uh, it was easy to to communicate and to to get to know a lot of people during this beer market and I think it was a good thing for NFT too that left uh, people uh, that made people think about other possibilities uh, w- with the blockchain than uh, earning money trading them trading them. Yeah, it definitely felt like um, the NFT space was the diamond in the rough through that yeah. that bear market. <laughs> it was just full of positivity amongst you know every all the weeds and and the, the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, do you have much connection with the traditional art world? Not much. I um I still have connection from uh, when I was in Paris and uh, when I was uh, working uh, as a um, as a as a comic uh, designer and uh, and I ha- I have still have friends but they they don't really care about NFTs right now. When I try to talk about this, uh, it looks like I mean uh, some kind of strange cult. Uh, with only a handful of people uh, inside uh, inside the echo chamber, and uh, so so they're they're not interested at all by by this. But there there are a lot of people who don't get it at all, and uh, even uh, even in our uh, cryptocurrency world, people don't uh, understand how it, it it's possible to give value to something that you can steal and you can share. Uh, as much as you want, you know the 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 the, the identity of an of an item on the blockchain for most people is not something that they they quite get, and they don't want to even try. Most of them mm. right now, but it's 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 soon going to change. They will have no choice. I'm sure that soon they will have a they will have a connection to NFT through art or maybe before through through uh, every or uh, their uh, everyday life. I think it's gonna it's gonna grow and it's gonna be everywhere pretty soon. Our uh, our last podcast um, that we did was with a a young artist called Ben Gentili, who whose pieces were really spectacular pieces uh, made from the, the the Bitcoin code spread across forty artworks, and he sold an NFT and a physical piece at Christie's for a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So if that doesn't start. Uh, uh, raising some eyebrows in the, you know, the traditional art spaces, if that's the best way to call it, then one feels like that's just the very first, you know, bit of the dam that's breaking, and yes. and 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 the rest, the rest will follow. And uh, to to Christie's, it, it must have been quite impressive too, because the the, the estimation was something like twelve 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 thousand. <laughs> yes, uh, it was. Wasn't it? Yeah, it, it must have been some kind of surprise for them, and uh, that's that's great that that there was an NFT connected to this sale. Yes, so it's a big thing. 
Indeed. Yeah, exci- exciting times. And I th- I'm sure there's lots more to come. I think it, um, I think when artists begin to see the kind of toolkit that NFTs allow um, with the programmability of it, I mean, just, just you describing uh, a little bit of what you've, you've, you've done with Trevor uh, shows the extent of the potential creativity that you can have with this. And I, I, I feel like it's when, when artists understand the scope of the canvas that NFTs create, uh, they, they can't help but get excited. Um, and, um, and I think it's that, that that's going to be another major factor uh, as people come to understand what, what's possible. Yes, and pro- programmable art like uh, the I think platform is something that justify uh, justify NFTs to the eyes of many people. You know, just having a, fra- a digital frame uh, that is changing every day, depending on whatever data is going to grab on the internet or uh, whatever uh, collector is wanting to show. Uh, it, right now, it's just the beginning. We're just playing around with, with things that are quite simple, but I think it's gonna. Uh, it's it's going to be completely revolutionary in a, in a, in a few years when uh, when people, when artists are going to start uh, investing this this technology and trying to express themselves uh, through them and uh, with the help of, of uh, people that will help them to script and uh, will have uh, help them to to uh, program the the, the art uh, like the asking platform is, is doing. I would not be able to do. Uh, anything on uh, on on their platform is there if they, there was not a, a programmer behind them behind my ideas and uh, making uh, making stuff it's the sort of merging of art and science isn't it and the artists and the scientists all coming together to yes it took it took some time <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot of time uh, even in a, something like video games you know first first video games were very ugly pretty ugly the the music was uh, was not good and it was because it was just programmer doing uh, doing doing the, the visuals and doing the music and once everybody came together we now are uh, we're now having a work of art and uh, and video game became more much more than than cinema now and uh, i think uh, we're going to have the same thing with uh, with the nft world we're going to have uh, connections between people that uh, would not have a, even talk uh, before and uh, making great things like uh, like the the programmable art uh, we are seeing now yeah absolutely and i'm sure in i'm sure in a couple of years we'll probably see christie's launching their own uh, platform token as well yes sure <laughs> maybe sooner than we expect maybe they're already thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> christie's participation token i love it they're in liquidity know. liquidity pool uh, Li- liquidity pool. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's all it's all coming down the road. It's uh, it's um, it's all very exciting stuff. What um, what kind of ad- advice would you give to uh, artists uh, coming coming into the space, looking to make a name name for themselves? Um, as the same as uh, in and the same as in art, you know, not only crypto art. You you need to have pleasure and to to enjoy doing your art and that's that's what is the most important after that uh, if you have the luck to find on, to find some people who fall in love with what what you're doing uh, it's going to be easier to find them uh, through the the crypto art than uh, showing your painting in, in the street uh, in a market and so or something you know you have a uh, people artists now have a way to to show their their production to the uh, to the entire planet uh, of possibility to to sell to anyone and that's completely re- revolutionary for art and that's going to create a new generation of collectors and a new generation of, uh, of artists so don't try to calculate and to 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 do things that could work or might work better than other try to try to do your thing things coming from uh, the, the view from the inside and that's maybe the only way uh, you, you will have to 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 have success and to, to to find people who love what you're doing because it's it's going to be genuine it's going to be something that it's coming from you uh, so i think that that's the best advice i can give take uh, take enjoy enjoy what you're doing and uh, and try to find people who who enjoy what you're doing when you're doing it for yourself 
You have a, a quite a strong sort of recognizable style. Um, I can almost tell, you know, one of your pieces straight away without sort of knowing it's 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 you. Um, has your style changed since coming into the NFT space? Um, uh, from from in regards to to the work you were making before you you came to the space. Uh, I everything I'm doing right now in uh, in NFTs. I almost started doing them uh, with the NFTs, you know, taking uh, all the old paintings and um, animating them and trying to put a lot of crazy elements inside uh, inside of them. That's something uh, I never did before NFTs, you know. When uh, I sent to Super Rare my three first pieces that they ask for the when you when you're trying to get inside, uh, the, I decided to to work. Because all I do is uh, is collage, you know. I take elements and I, I put them together in Photoshop and things like that. So uh, there was a lot of copyright issue, you know. Uh, every, all the Twitter header uh, that I, that I did, uh, most of them are full of copyrighted materials. I, I take things from movies, from video games, from websites, from Google Image, from everywhere. So uh, I wanted to to go in super well with something that was out of all copyright so i decided to take uh, the old painting because of that that that's that that's the start of me using the old paintings on a, uh, with the nft and before that i was just collecting visuals completely uh, in a in a total anarchy on the uh, on the internet i'm still i'm still doing it but i'm trying to be more, more discreet <laughs> I mean that that's a that raises an interesting point is it, is where where do you draw the line as as to what can be used um within other people's art since since uh since then I I looked around and I saw that uh, uh as long as you're not uh, printing a t-shirt and making a collection of uh, things like that uh, you you can you can use a mickey mouse in your uh, in your painting you know the this neck cannot do a lot about it they can try but most of the justice uh, stated it was possible for an artist to use uh, as a citation a visual or a logo or anything if the artist didn't didn't want at first to hurt the the the, the company or things like that. See, if the visual is not hurting the company directly, I don't think there's a problem doing a one piece of art. At least that's what I hope because I, I use a lot of uh, uh, things coming from you know movies and uh, uh, yeah, could have I could have problems someday. It's it's impossible to make art in a vacuum, yeah. right? I mean, like we, everything is everything is uh, ideas get derived from seeing other people's ideas. Of course. And, um, I think it's 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 important that as a community though we understand where where the the, the difference lies. I mean, oh, just well, yeah. taking another person's piece and putting it on a different platform. Yeah, you're talking about it, the, you know. the art mixing and the things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm all for it. I think there's no there's no problem. It it uh, it gives value to what I do when someone uh, remix it and uh, and sell it. Uh, and I am not asking for anything. It's 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 great, you know. It would maybe be a problem if it was working better than my work. But <laughs> <laughs> to, to, till till it happens, it's a, I think it's a good thing, and uh, I don't see it as a, as a problem or as a stealing or things like that. We all, uh, yes, as you said, uh, everything you do, you do it because at a moment in your life you had a uh, you had something in front of you that give you uh, the, this idea or show you the way to this idea or something you yes you're not creating uh, from nothing you're creating from what you see and from, from what you hear uh, all day long well, i suppose my my final question would be what are you most excited about for the future most excited about it um for the future it could be the future of nfts or it could be the future of the world or you know, oh existence. no! No, the future of the world is not quite exciting for me. I prefer the future of <laughs> NFTs right now. <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> future of NFT to to me is a, is a is a good thing, and the future of the virtual world is, is maybe better than the the future of the actual world. <laughs> uh, but um, I can't wait to see where this where all of this is going, because uh, I. Whether it be for cryptocurrencies or NFTs, it's uh, it's a revolution waiting to happen. You know, once once people are gonna really understand and really uh, embrace 
what all of this is, the freedom that, that they can acquire, the, the, the freedom and the trust, the trustless uh, system that will, uh, that will change, change everything. So I can't wait to see all of this unfold. I can't wait to see what uh, programmable art is going to become, what, uh, what is gonna, going to come out of this. Uh, I can't wait to, to, to see the virtual world interconnect and the metaverse really exist. And uh, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, I really feel like I, w I was born too late. You know, I, I would really like to have like a 100 year in front of me to see where all of this unfold, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to have them and let's Google do something very fast. <laughs> <laughs> we need Elon Musk to um, sort out uh, all the yeah. bio, bio uh, upgrades. Cry cryogenics. <laughs> Yeah, or uh, DNA, DNA uh, modifications, or perhaps Vitalik <laughs> as well. One of his his quests, I think, is finding eternal life. So uh, maybe he'll solve yeah. that quite that, that puzzle. <laughs> but he he could be to to two hundred years old and coming from another planet. I won't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so we've got a few questions from the community. We put it out to our Discord, and um, so. We've got from Drago Nate asks, "What is your favorite thing about making art?" Uh, so, I have uh, always been drawing. You know, but drawing to me when I was at school was a way to escape and to uh, to, to to get away from the the boreness I was uh, I was in. You know, and all my life I um, I have I had this need to to create. You uh, you take me in the countryside, uh, in a place where there's nothing to do. Uh, I, I'm going to grab a knife. I'm going to grab a piece of wood, and I'm going to start to do something. You know, I have to I have to create. Even, even sometime at the restaurant, I play with the sauce on the inside my plate, then draw draw something. It's not always because I'm bored, and uh, I prefer to say that because all the people I have around me seeing me doing that will think I'm bored to death with them. But uh, it's uh, it's 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 natural to me and it's uh, i need it um i need it as much as i need music in my life you know i'm not a musician and that's a that's a big frustration i sing but i can't uh, i can't play an, an instrument uh, properly and uh i need i need music and i need to create because it's uh, it it makes everyday life completely surreal and uh, better and uh and i i, I need it that, that that's what's great about making art for me is that it's an escape to 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 the real world fantastic um what kind of music i'm intrigued what kind of music all kind of music i love old pop music i love electronic music uh, um, not that much classical music i've, I've been married to a, a classical musician for uh, 15 years so i'm, I'm, I'm kind of fed up uh, <laughs> <laughs> classical and co contempor contemporary music uh, no I'm, I'm 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 trying to listen to new thing all the time uh, when i'm working um, i go on, on, uh, on spotify and try to see a new album things i never heard before and uh, I'm trying to discover as much as I can, and I, I have something like ten playlists, different playlists where I where I put things here and there. And uh, all the, those playlists depends on the state of mind uh, I am or the state of mind I'm expect, expecting to get. You know, so I have funny playlists. I have. Uh, Calm playlist. I have playlist for parties, playlist for friends who are coming home to have a drink, things like that. You know? Amazing. Um, other than your collaboration with the non fungibles and producing a total masterpiece of the life of Brian, um, what <laughs> what's been your best art collaboration so far? And that's from Jilt. So it's 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 going to be the, the 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 last one with, with Trevor because. Uh, uh, I always tried to respect as much as I could the the art uh, that I was playing with because most of my collaboration was about artists sending me one of their pieces and saying to me, do whatever you want with it, go ahead. And uh, most of the time I tried to uh, stay in the in the same feeling and animate. And uh, and on this collaboration, uh, I, uh, I sent ideas to to Trevor and he accepted them so I was able to put a lot of things uh, a lot of my universe in the in this piece and uh, and it works pretty well with uh, with what Trevor uh, did and uh, I was quite happy to see this I was 
even more happy that Trevor loves it and found it fun and great. And uh, I had no limit this time, you know. I um, I didn't try to stay in the stay in, stay in the same color color theme in the same style. Uh, there will be lots of there there will be two different style whether uh, Ethereum goes up or Ethereum goes down. Uh, when we are going up, we're gonna be with a, in a universe full of color, uh, and going down, we're gonna be darker and darker until till we get to the very hell bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lo lot of fun doing this and uh, to me right now it's just separated elements and what is going to happen what's, once they are all uh, together uh, bring together by the async team is something I really can't wait to see oh, I really can't wait to see this piece it's not, it's not going to be a case of just seeing it either it's going to be a case of watching it change over time <laughs> yeah so Omega Wow asks, what might motivate someone who wants to start crypto art but not too sure? What are the benefits? The, um, the, it's free. You don't have to pay. It's permissionless. There are, there are platforms you can, uh, in, uh, in a matter of minutes, you can uh, upload your, uh, your art, whether it's something you have scanned and it did on paper, scanned or something you, you created on Photoshop or, or else. And uh, that, that, that's something you need to try because that's the only way you can show your art to so many people in the world and so many people that are interested in art and ready to collect it. Uh, and uh, I, I know no place where you can find this in the, in the physical world of, of art. There, the, there might be some places where you can expose, like restaurants and bars, when uh, nobody knows uh, who, what you do. But it's not the same kind of exposition. You know, people in a bar, most of the people don't give a shit about art. So most of the people in a restaurant won't give a shit about what's, in, what's on the world. Uh, when you're creating an NFT and when you're uh, uploading it to uh, OpenSea, Rarible, or whatever uh, permissionless platform, you, you have an a worldwide exposition to people who are specifically interested in art. Why wouldn't you try? I mean, can't can't argue with that reasoning, can you? <laughs> um, I've tried drawing before, and everything I draw comes out looking like a stick man. Um, but even I feel inspired. <laughs> so some people try made, made fortune <laughs> <with that. laughs> to try to try and get my stick men onto open sea. Uh, <laughs> I will. I will try. Watch this space. Watch this space. I think I uh, <laughs> super rare, George. I think I can see that. Stick men on super. Yeah, I, uh, that that might be some way off. Um, <laughs> the way the way the way I hear it, it's actually it's actually quite tricky to get on there. It is. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'll have to perfect my stick man to to a point where um, Mr. Crane will give me the nod. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and there's one more question uh, by Becca Matic. Have you ever considered minting on other blockchains? Oh yes. Why not? Yes. Yes. Uh, are there. There's a, there's something I did for uh, I made a banknote with uh, actors of the EOS blockchain. On them, it was a commission, and it's uh, supposed soon to be uh, to be mint on the EOS blockchain and uh, sold uh, sold on the on the, on an EOS exchange or something. Mm. So yes, I'm a. Uh, before uh, before NFTs, I had something like one uh, Ethereum, you know, and uh, all I had was in Bitcoin. And uh, when I saw the the possibilities uh, and the use case of, of Ethereum, I started to, to switch at least at fifty percent on, uh, on on Ethereum. And uh, and I'm I'm sure that uh, actually there are there are more um, efficient. Uh, blockchain than the Ethereum blockchain, but uh, there are so many people that are developing on on the Ethereum blockchain that I think it's it's already maybe too late for them. It's like uh, cre creating a, a memo RPG after World of Warcraft. They've been uh, it's been almost twenty years that they're developing their game, and uh, you, you, there's no way you can uh, you can challenge them even with something that will be more uh, more efficient and more beautiful. It would have to be a total revolution. Uh, yes, but uh, I'm not seeing that yet. Um, well, it's been it's been really inspirational 
uh, to talk to you a lot. It's been yeah, so, so interesting to get your perspective on this um, really quite extraordinary space. I think we all feel fairly lucky to be involved in it to a degree. Um, certainly I do. Um, so yes, once again, th- thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. This has been such an enjoyable conversation. Thanks to you guys. It was a pleasure. Wow. What an awesome guy a lot of money is. <laughs> so cool. I'm I'm so thrilled he's such a dude because I love his art. And uh, to make to find out that uh, you know the guy behind the art is, is is as cool as the art is 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 good to see. <laughs> On to gerbils then. Yeah. We've got farmer gerbil this week. Thank you everyone who sent in your farmer gerbil entries. They were inspired. Certainly were. We're going to read out a couple and then we're going to set the next gerbil. So, George, would you like to lead with the first? As ever, Wear Kitty, you are a, a, a stable um, a companion in the non fun gerbils for always producing very creative contributions. So, here we go with yours. Farmer Gerbil looked at the package of artificial fertilizer he'd just bought on the internet. A 100x growth enhancer. The instructions seemed simple enough. Sprinkle thinly on dry earth over newly sown seeds. The list of warnings, though. Never use without proper protective gear. Don't get in touch with direct sunlight. Don't expose to water. Don't inhale. Don't get in direct contact with skin or eyes and so on, for another ten pages. And he skimmed fast through, until he came to the end of it. If these precautions are not followed, there's severe risk of instant combustion, spontaneous mutations, irrational itching, tail knotting, earth implosions, expected success rate less than 10%. All use at your own risk. The farmer gerbil made the calculations quickly in his head. This was a no-brainer. He fired up the fertilizer spreader and emptied the whole bag into it. <laughs> oh, that sums up DeFi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's a really, really creative summation of um, the degen farmer um, <laughs> skipping past the 10 page of instructions and just dumping their entire Ethereum wallet that they've been gradually building over the last two or three days um, <laughs> um, <laughs> straight 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 into to instant combustion <laughs> thanks for that one it's uh, that's great <laughs> brilliant okay uh we'll go with carla mcjay thank you carla rumor has it that farmer gerbil is the son of two gerbil cousins it's a small town he's a shit speller too strawberry yield is scrawled on the beaten up piece of wood signposting his patch he is a rodent of mystery Perceived as an outcast farmer, living a solitary existence, Farmer Gerbil appears to take solace in his love of LPs. Unlike his familial relations, his collection is diverse. Bob Marley and the Whalers. Deaf Eye Leopard, straight out of Compton, to name but a few. But Farmer Gerbil dances like no one is watching. And the reality is, no one is watching. The villagers snigger at the inbred farmer with questionable music taste and dancing ability. But Farmer Gerbil has the last laugh. (laughs) Herein lies the untold, decentralised from the world, unbeknown to the gossip mongers. This village enigma is the cream of his crop. Farmer Gerbil meringues through the land of the Jaredites, where bounties await and gerbil pharaohs feed on grapes from gerbil Cleopatra's. An abundance of fruits squirrelled away. Be not deceived, for whatsoever a gerbil soweth, that shall he also reap. Oh boy, wow, that is that is very um, literary. There are some big words in there. <laughs> there are some very big um, words in there. I, I might think, have had to look some up. I think Bob Marley and the Whalers is my favourite bit. Uh, Defy Leopard. <laughs> Made me, made me uh, laugh out loud. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a fantastic piece. Uh, and the the solace in his love for LPs um, and 
this relation to liquidity pools. Very clever, Carla. Very clever. Yeah, it is indeed. <laughs> okay, next up, the Flaz. Uh, this is a two-parter, George. I think he's written this for us. Okay, so who's going to be the de- de- for us. degenerate DeFi guy, and who's going to be Farmer Gerbil? I think you should be Farmer Gerbil. <laughs> All right, I'll be Farmer Gerbil. Good morning, sir. Could we purchase some brie from you? We've got some brie, but we do make some fine cheeses. Ch- uh, cheese? What's that? Uh, a new token? Token? No. Uh, it's mature and it's strong. Sounds good. Uh, is there a Uniswap pear? Big pardon? No. No, we don't grow pears. What's the liquidity of cheese, then? Well... Um, you got to keep it chilled. Uh, you, you mean locked up? Big pardon? Sorry, are you a yield farmer? What's that one? You know, putting crypto assets to work to generate returns on those assets, potentially earning bonuses in the form of governance tokens and such like. Get off my land. <laughs> Mate, I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually really this is actually really well written it is well flaz th- that was um yeah a crack <laughs> do you have any uni swap pairs nope don't grow pairs <laughs> it's very good that's inspired very good. that's very funny <laughs> um <clears throat> on to our winner oh uh, yes big congratulations rude moose it's a it's a Inspired piece. You've pulled it out of the bag today. And we have our guest. Um, a lot of money. Take it away. Farmer Jabal had a pool, DeFi, DeFi, O. Oh. And in that pool, I ride three boat. Sell high, buy low, go. With the unicorn here and the rare coin there. Here about, there about, everywhere about. But Farmer Jabal had a pool filled with well coin hodl. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, there you have it. Rude Moose, congratulations yep. and a lot of money. Thank you for that reading. Brilliant stuff. Of course, Rude Moose, you have been asking for a funk gerbil for a while. So, um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's spruce it up a little bit. Roll the tape. Wow. There we go. Rude Moose, you are pushing the uh, the technological boundaries of the gerbils. We are moving forwards in the space and we are... <laughs> We're creating a funk band. <laughs> We're going to have to launch Gerbil Records. And uh, <clears throat> yes, your entry made me buy new bass guitar strings and a DI box so that I could plug it into the computer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So don't ever say that we don't take the community massively seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you ask for a funk gerbil? Hey, no problem. I will make a funk song for you. <laughs> gerbil theme. <laughs> there we go. Funk farmer gerbil. <laughs> I never thought I'd be doing that. Awesome stuff. Brilliant. So next gerbil. Rug pull gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> Conjure up some, some genius images with that. Um, or complete with all the sushi deliciousness, um, um, and uh, yeah, so that's what we're going with. Rug pull gerbil. There's been a lot of rug pulling recently, and I can imagine that that visual is going to look really cool. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do that. Great. Right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See you next week. See you next month. See you next time. Indeed. Uh, come, come, join us on our Discord. Visit us on Twitter at nonfungerbals. Our website is nonfungerbals.com and leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to us. Do it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>